Hi watch friends, welcome back to the Bob's Watches YouTube channel. Today is an exciting day because we are debuting a brand new series. I'm joined by Justin, our director of photography, and Ripley, our amazing, talented director of everything here at Bob's Watches. That's not your title, but it's I was okay. I've got a director title yeah. now. Oh, yes, you are. You're a director of whatever you want it to be. Um, and I'm Emily. I am our senior manager of content. So this is our debate style show where we're going to talk all things watches, but we're going to be very specific with a show topic each episode. Ripley and Justin will each get to choose a specific point on this topic, right? They will have 60 seconds to deliver their facts and their opinions and exactly why it matters to them. Outside of that, I am here to just moderate and make sure that you at home have everything you need to make a choice at the end. You have to pick a side. We're not gonna choose. So before we get to this, I wanna know, watches, what are you guys wearing today? You wanna kick it off, Rip? Yeah, well, their uh, boyfriend jeans is a celebrated style, so I think girlfriend watch can be one. So I'm wearing a little gold Cartier, which I actually, love wearing way more than I thought I would. <laughs> okay, the Panthera on you looks pretty great. Very Timothy Chalamet of you. Well, I've got such little wrists anyway. It, it's rare that I actually feel like I've got a large wrist, so this is yeah. this is perfect. We have we have kindred wrist um, sibling souls. I so. love what you're wearing today. Thank you, mine is definitely a favorite. This is a vintage Rolex Cellini. It's actually a birth year. Um, the hexagon case just gets Yeah, like, I love that on shape case. So, so fun. What are you wearing, Justin? I'm wearing uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Kermit. Oh, yeah, 16610 aluminum Kermit. bezel. Aluminum bezel, yeah. Proper. One of my favorite Rolexes, period, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, always jump at the chance to wear it. Fantastic on yeah, you. Thank As you. always, we want to know what are you guys wearing at home? Run the gamut. Give us something crazy. We don't need to just know the expected. We really like the weird stuff, too. So, be sure to chime in. Let us know your own wrist check at home. Okay, you ready for the topic? I know you guys are aware. <laughs> Today's topic is the best first luxury watch. The emphasis is daily wear and something that can stand the test of time. Okay, so who wants to kick us off? Justin, you feeling good? You want me to start? Yes, so as I mentioned, you get 60 seconds. I'm gonna hold you off from biting back unless you just can't help it. But 60 seconds, get your points in. If you don't need it all, you don't have to use it all. I trust you. So we will keep time on our clock here too, so. All right, Justin, are you ready to kick off our first debate? Yes. All right. Let's start that clock. Three, two, one, go. And the winner is the Omega Speedmaster ah. Moonwatch. Being your first luxury watch, I think it needs a few things. It needs to be classic because I think you're never gonna get rid of it. At least for me, I want my first luxury watch to be something I have forever and I want something classic. I don't want something weird and funky. I can get weird and funky things later. The first one, I want it to stand the test of time. Um, I also think it should be attainable. It should be expensive enough that you know, it means something and it's it's important, but also it can't be out of reach. It can't be something that you're gonna be, you know, have to save for years and years to get. And I think the Moon Watch ticks all those boxes. It's such a classic watch. It's one of the most iconic watches ever made. First watch on the Moon. Um, on top of that, it's functional. Um, it's a great 42 millimeter sport watch. It's a good size, stainless steel, black dial. Um, you can definitely dress it down. You can kind of dress it up. It works great on straps. Like there's just so many benefits to the classic moon watch that makes it great if you're looking to start a luxury watch collection. Time. Oh. Well. Definitely. That is another reason because I just timed that and I knew yeah. because of my chronograph function on my new watch wow. that it has been one minute. So anyway, classic moon watch, fantastic first watch. All right, definitely quiet luxury over here. Yes. Yeah. Unique pick, okay. I have some feelings about it. I'm sure you guys at home are having some feelings about it. Are you having some feelings about it? Uh, I, of course I have feelings. I've always had feelings. I'm full of feelings. <laughs> well, so many feelings. Fantastic. I've got 60 seconds of feelings. Yes, fantastic <laughs> side of this debate. Get that clock back up to 60. I know somebody that has a point they want to make. All right. I don't want to know what you have just yet, but I'm ready for your factual side of this debate. Best first luxury watch from Ripley Seller's standpoint. Start the want clock. Want a minute? Hold on, I got this one. Go. So you want a watch that is going to speak to you on multiple levels, but also be something that you can appreciate at all levels of collecting. I think the Speedmaster is an awesome watch, but for me, it's going to be a Rolex Datejust. Uh, this example, 16234, so older generation, you still have a 3135 movement sapphire crystal. 
Jubilee bracelet, fluted bezel. This is about as quintessential as it gets. Now, I think the Speedmaster is an awesome watch, but it requires a bit of appreciation of the Speedmaster and the, you know, horology as a whole to really actually fully appreciate the Speedmaster. Will it have a place in your collection? 100%. But you also have to understand what a mechanical chronograph is, understand the whole NASA stuff, and if you do, great. But a Datejust is iconic. It is the quintessential Rolex watch. You see a fluted bezel in any, every single US airport around the Rolex clocks there. It, it goes with everything. You can dress it up with a suit. It's got a screw down crown, so unlike the Speedmaster, no worries with water resistance here. And again, another watch that you can keep in your collection your whole life, pass it down, continuously service it, wear it with anything, and it's always gonna have a place in your collection, but it just, you, it doesn't require as much of a, it's not as specialized of a purchase. The Speedmaster is awesome, but unless you're looking for a sporty chronograph, it's gonna leave you a bit cold. This is a sports watch insofar as its capabilities, 100 meters water resistant, chronometer certified, durable stainless steel case. Uh, white gold bezel, so you get a pop of luxury, which isn't there on the Speedmaster. And if you wanted to put this on a leather strap and wear it with a tux, you absolutely could. Is there room in a collection for both of these? 100%, but for the person who just wants a good, timeless, classic, quintessentially nice watch that every single person on this planet, regardless of their knowledge, is gonna be able to say, yeah, that's a great looking timepiece from the world's best brand, Rolex. Hmm, nice points. You have anything to say? Quickly? Yeah, I actually agree. On, on my points that uh, you know I made about the Speedmaster, they fit there as well, right? It's a timeless watch. Mm -hmm. It's something that's attainable. It's a little more expensive, right? I mean, I guess it kind of depends on your budget. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's a good choice. That's one that you could have in your in your collection forever. Um, for me, I think I kind of like the sportiness of the Speedmaster yeah. a little bit more. I mean, some of this comes down to personal taste, but Very much I, so. I do think it's a great choice. And um, you know, my my qualifiers for your first luxury watch, it ticks all those boxes. So I do think it's a good choice. Not quite as good, but it still is a good choice. You guys have pretty great options. Yeah. I was surprised to not see gold in some capacity in there, any of these. There, I there, mean, so, I mean. So I, 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 let me go ahead and respond to Justin. There is gold here, despite it being a lovely white metal watch. We actually have 18 karat gold on the hands, hour markers, and fluted bezel. Touch of luxury, doesn't have to shout about it. I really love the Speedmaster, and it was one of my first watches. But at the same time, it is such a specific purchase that, you know, you have to want a Speedmaster to appreciate a Speedmaster. And you're only going to get a Speedmaster. This, you want a two-tone, it's only a little bit more. You want a blue dial, black dial, different Roman numeral hour markers. The date just is a blank canvas. If you don't like the fluted bezel, you don't like the Jubilee bracelet, options. Smooth bezel, you could go a gem set bezel, you could go an oyster bracelet, you options. could go a leather strap. There's a lot of options in the Speedmaster world, to be There's very fair. There's a lot of options. There aren't, the Moonwatch is a black, I just saw a Schumacher this girl so might need. So are we talking all Speedmasters or are we talking? Oh shoot, you're right, you're yeah, right. No, we're talking I'll the Moonwatch. Now here's a, one other point I'd like to make. This has a sapphire crystal. So if you walk into the wall, there, you're not gonna have a scratch on it. Now with the acrylic crystal on that, the Hesalite crystal, you can always polish it, but you're gonna need a, now a little bit of like gatekeeping here. You're gonna need to know what poly watch is and know how to do that. This is, it's simple. Do you just wear it, set it, forget it. It winds itself, that you have to wind each day. You put it on, you wear it every day to the rest of your life, you change the date at the end of the month, set it for daylight savings, you're done. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm gonna take both. It's not up to me to decide, and it's not up to you, nor you. You guys had great points. I do really appreciate the thoughtfulness and just picking something that's not only universal, but also something that just stands the test of time. You guys understood the assignment and delivered. Uh, we also were tasked with picking a watch, yes, right? Yes. There was a lot. I don't know about for you, but I had a lot on that short list. Uh, I was surprised you didn't go tutor. Good. There was a couple on there that would be good, which I'm actually really curious. I know we missed some things. We, we did. picked two watches out of probably dozens or more that would make the list. Leave us a comment down below. I want to know if you guys think of some of the other ones that I wanted to choose, make it into your selection. Please let yeah. us know where you guys stand in this debate, especially between the two options presented. Which side are you going to pick? Please sound off in those comments. And as Justin mentioned, if we missed something that you think deserves to be a part of this conversation, go ahead, drop it in there. We'll kind of take note by the likes and everybody else's votes too. So thank you for joining us for our first episode. We will definitely be back with more watch debates soon. So until then, everybody, be well.